Hi everyone, Carla here. So today we're gonna go over the March 2020 no calculator math questions. So starting here with question number one, you're given a table and I read you this table just for clarity. They ask you what is the possible relationship between X and Y and I can see all of these answer choices are in the Y equals MX plus B form, which if you're not already familiar with that equation, you really need to be for the SAT because it pops up all the time. So M will be our slope and B will be our Y intercept and our Y intercept will always be the easiest thing to look for both in tables and on graphs on the SAT. So when I look at this table, I can see when X is zero, Y equals two, and that is our Y intercept. So I know that B needs to be two in this equation, and that only occurs for answer choice A, where B is a positive two. For question number two, they give us a figure and they tell us that we have two sets of parallel lines, which can confuse students sometimes because the parallel lines are intersecting and it's a little bit distracting. But if you just zoom in on one set of parallel lines at a time, it becomes much easier to see that if this right here is 40 degrees, this angle over here is the alternate interior angle, so that also needs to be 40 degrees. And then this angle over here, X, is the corresponding angle to that 40 degrees. So that's also going to be 40 degrees. So for question number three, they give us the function f is defined by f of x equals x squared minus 5x plus six. And they ask us to find f of four. So f of four is basically asking us what is y when x is four. So we're gonna plug in that four for x and get four squared minus five times four plus six, which is 16 minus 20 plus six or 22 minus 20, which equals two. For number four, this is going to be quite a long word problem. So we really need to zoom in on just the parts that we need and translate those parts to math. So Araceli can spend up to a total of $20 on streamers and balloons. So up to is going to be less than or equal to $20. So I can eliminate all the greater than or equal to $20 in the answer choices. So next they tell us that streamers cost $149 per pack and balloons cost $439 per pack. And that doesn't help us much because we have 1.49S in both answer choices A and B and 4.39B in both answer choices A and B. So which of the following inequalities represents the situation where S is the number of packs of streamers Araceli can buy and B is the number of packs of balloons Araceli can buy. So we're looking for the total. So we're going to wanna to add the packs of streamers to the packs of balloons. And we're gonna go with B because that's the one that gives us that addition symbol. For number five, Bill is planning to drive 1,000 miles to visit his family. I'm gonna skip down to the answer choices to see exactly what I'm looking for here. And I can see these are all in the Y equals MX plus B form. So the 1,000 miles is how far he's planning to drive. So that's either gonna be my total or it's going to be my Y intercept. In this case, it's going to be my Y intercept. If he plans to drive 250 miles per day, so the 250 miles per day, that is going to be our slope because it's our rate of change. So 250 miles per day, we can plug that in for M. Which of the following represents the remaining distance D in miles that Bill will have to drive to reach his family? So we know D is equal to Y equals MX plus B. And I can plug in the 1000 for B and the 250 for the slope. But since it's the remaining distance, I'm going to have a negative slope because the number of miles that remains for Bill to travel will be decreasing 
as he travels along. So we're gonna go with D because that gives us our 1000 as our y-intercept and our negative 250 as our slope. For number six, the question asks, which of the following is equivalent to the given expression? So equivalent is equals. So we are going to eliminate our X's up here because we have a positive X and a negative X, so they cancel. And we're left with X cubed plus X squared, which is going to be C. For number seven, again, we're given a table and then they ask us which of the following could be the graph of f of x. So I'm going to zoom in on the y-intercept again because that's going to be the easiest part to help you eliminate one of these answer choices and look for a graph that does not have a y-intercept of two. So I can see answer choice A does have the y-intercept of two, answer choice B has a y-intercept of two, answer choice C does not, that has a y-intercept of zero, zero, and D has a y-intercept of two. Next, I'm going to pick a different part of that table and follow the same process. So when X is negative two, Y is negative two. For answer choice A, when X is negative two, Y is not negative two. So I can eliminate A. For B, I can see negative two, negative two also does not lie on that graph, so I can eliminate B. And for D, that does lie on the graph, so I'm going to pick D. For number eight, which of the following expressions is equivalent? So we're going to find something that equals the original expression, that's what equivalent means, which means we need to simplify. So I'm going to expand that denominator and that will enable me to eliminate the x plus two in the numerator, which gives me one over x plus two, which is b. For number nine, which of the following is the equation of the line? That again is y equals mx plus b. That contains the points one comma three and five comma 15. So those two points I can use to find my slope and then I can match up that slope to the right answer choice. So I'm going to use the change in y over the change in x, which is rise over run. That's a very basic slope formula. And I'm gonna plug in my coordinates. So I'm going to have 15 minus three over five minus one, or 12 over four, which is equal to three. So I need a slope of positive three, which is answer choice A. For number 10, they give us an equation and they tell us that B is a constant and the equation has infinitely many solutions. So infinitely many solutions is extremely important in this case because that means we have the same line on both sides of the equal sign. So they have the same y-intercept and the same slope. So whenever I'm asked to solve for a constant and I'm given a clue such as infinitely many solutions or no solution, I'm going to make the two sides of the equation match. And then I'm going to zoom in on the one part that I need and see what is it equal to on the other side of the equation. So in this case, I'm gonna put the two X plus eight over one, and I'm going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by two, which is going to give me four X plus 16 over two on the right-hand side of the equation. And I can zoom in on the B and see that would equal 16. So D is my answer. For number 11, they're asking for the area of the figure shown. It's going to be easiest to break this figure up into shapes that you're more familiar with, like a triangle and a square. In this case, since I know the other side is four, this also has to be four, and now I have a three, four, five triangle. I could also find that the missing side is three by using the Pythagorean theorem, but that's going to take a little bit more time. So once I have that the base of the triangle is three, I can find the area of the triangle, which is going to be one half, three times four, or six. I can also find the area of the square 
by plugging in four for side squared, and that gives me 16. So the total area for that figure shown is going to be six plus 16 or 22. For number 12, what is the y-intercept? So the y-intercept, as you can see, is extremely important. And that is what is y equal to when x equals zero? And these answer choices are all given in coordinate form. So we know that's going to be x comma y or zero comma a number for y. So any answer choice that does not have zero in the spot for x, I can eliminate. So I'm eliminating a, b, and d, so it has to be c. I can verify that y is in fact one by plugging in the zero for x in the given information. And I can see any number raised to a zero exponent is going to equal one. So yes, c would be my answer here. So for number 13, I can see that I have a quadratic. And the question asks, what is the sum of the solutions to the given equation? So for the sum of the solutions, I'm going to have to solve for x, and I'm going to move everything over to the left-hand side so that I can factor. So I'm going to have x squared minus 16x plus 39 equals zero. When I factor that, I'm gonna have x minus three times x minus 13 equals zero because three times 13 gives me 39 and negative three plus negative 13 gives me negative 16. So then I have x minus three equals zero, so x equals three, and x minus 13 equals zero, so x equals 13, and that would be three plus 13 equals 16 because remember they're asking for the sum of the solution, so I wanna add the two solutions together. For number 14, they give us an equation there with a ton of variables and quite a wordy word problem. So whenever there's a lot of words in a word problem, I'm going to skip to the end and see what are they actually asking for here. In this case, they're asking which of the following gives the speed of the object in terms of the other quantities. I may want to read to figure out which variable represents the speed of the object, or I can just glance at the answer choices and see if all of these answers they solved for V. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So my first step is I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by s. So I'm going to get L divided by s equals the square root of one minus V squared over C squared. Then I'm going to square both sides and get L squared over S squared equals one minus V squared over C squared. Next, I am going to do a little switcheroo here so that I can get my v squared over c squared to be positive. So I'm going to swap sides. So I'm going to have v squared over c squared equals one minus l squared over s squared. At this point, I can take the square root of both sides to just get v instead of v squared. So this is going to be v over c equals the square root of one minus L squared over S squared, or V equals C times one minus L squared over S squared. So my answer here would be A. For number 15, this is a half-life problem, and they tell us that the half-life is 150 years. So that means whatever time they give us, we're gonna have to divide that by 150 years to see what our exponent actually is. So for answer choice A, that's T divided by 200, I'm looking for T divided by 150, so I can eliminate answer choice A, answer choice B, C, and then for D, I can see that has the right exponent, so that is my answer. So for number 16, we have Y equals MX plus B where M and B are constants, and they wanna know what is the value of M, so they want the slope. So I'm going to just mark my Y and X intercepts here because those would be the easiest points to work with for me, and that's going to be zero comma four and negative two comma zero. So my slope is going to be the change in Y over the change in X or four minus zero over zero minus negative two, which is four over two, or just two for my slope.
For number 17, they tell you if x, y is the solution to the given systems of equations, what is the value of y? So I'm first going to solve for x and get x equals 5 over 2. Then I'm going to plug in that 5 over 2 here for x. So I'm going to get 5 over 2 plus y equals 5. I'm going to start by clearing that fraction and get 5 plus 2y equals 10 and just solve for y. So y is also 5 over 2. For number 18, they give us an equation that's in the factored form. And the factored form of any quadratic is going to give you your x-intercepts. And the question asks, what positive value of x satisfies the equation above? So I can set each of those factors equal to zero separately and get x equals three or x equals negative one. And they asked for the positive value, so I'm going to pick x equals three as my answer. For number 19, what value of x satisfies the equation above? So again, I just need to solve for x here. So I'm going to first add 0.6 to both sides of the equation, and that would give me 3x equals 2.4. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 3 and get x equals 0.8. So for number 20, they tell you that a square is inscribed in a circle with a radius of 6 root 2 inches. So I'm going to start by drawing a circle, and then I'm also going to draw my radius. And they want to know what is the perimeter of the square. So I need to also draw my square. And now I can see that I can put a right triangle in here, and then this would be 45 degrees, and this would be 45 degrees. And since the radius is six root two, I could say that this whole diameter, or the hypotenuse for my right triangle, is 12 root two. So let me just redraw that right here. I have a 45, 45, 90. And I need to find these sides in order to find my perimeter for the square. At the beginning of every math section, they give you this reference information, which you can use instead of using the Pythagorean theorem. So if I know that my hypotenuse is 12 root 2, I know that's equal to s root 2, so my s is equal to 12. So this is going to equal 12, and this is going to equal 12. And the perimeter is just 4 times a side, so that's going to be 4 times 12, or 48. And that's it for the No Calculator Math section. If you learned something new today, or you have any questions about something that we went over, please leave a comment below. Remember to give this video a thumbs up if you want to see more like it. Check back soon for the calculator math questions from the March 2020 SAT, and let me know if there's anything else that you'd like me to cover.